Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. Today we are talking about how to create a fully automated flicker setup. This is a flexible setup that easily creates random flickers, but also allows you to have control of it. Once set up, you can easily drag and drop anything in and have it flicker. It can be applied to objects, lights, text, almost anything. So let's jump in and see what it's all about. All right, so today we are talking about how to make any object with inside Cinema 4D flicker. Now, this is a really nice technique because it doesn't really use any keyframes. It's mostly an automated setup that's gonna give you huge flexibility um, in how it's animated, give you great random results, but still allow you control. Now, this lesson is probably gonna run a little long, so I'm gonna put the project files online if you don't have the time today, and you can kind of check them out in your own time. Um, we are also only gonna be focusing on animation today. So we won't be focusing on like how to create a glow look and how to create a neon sign or anything like that. It's only about the animation and the technique involved in that. All right, so Flickr, let's jump in and do it. So um, let's go ahead and start with the basics. So let's say we want this cube to flicker. How do we do that? Now flickering is nothing more than something changing, right? It's changing from A to B um, and every step in between. So let's go ahead and go to anything that can accept an effector. So in this situation, we're gonna go with the simplest, we're gonna do a fracture object. Now under this fracture object, we want to apply a plane effector. Now let's take our plane effector and let's go to parameters and let's turn off position because we don't care about the position. All we care about is the color. Color is the only thing we care about. So under color, you see we have fields color. It just defaults to. So let's go to fields and let's select a random field. Okay. Now once we select random field, nothing happens. That's because we have to tell it what to happen. So let's select our random field and let's go to color remap. All right, under color remap, we have no remapping. So we want gradient. And the reason why we want gradient is because we want an on to off switch. So if you think of black as being off and you think of white as being on, this would be essentially our on to off switch. So when I'm moving this, you can see that it's actually affecting the color of this. So this is good. This is step one, this is what we want. Um, what is it actually doing though, right? How is it actually getting this information? What is it, if you actually look under the hood, what is happening? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what's happening. If you're not interested what's happening underneath the hood, skip ahead to the next chapter and you don't have to hear it. So let's go to our random field and let's go to view settings and let's view plane preview. Let's turn that on. And when you turn it on, you see that we actually have a noise pattern that's happening here. So that noise pattern is being generated in the field tab, okay? So right now it's a Perlin noise and we can switch it to any noise that we want. Now for the sake of demonstration, I'm gonna switch it to cell, all right? And then I'm gonna make it like really big. So it's just very simple to see and understand. And I'd like to get it to be kind of black and white. So now we have a black, we have a black cube that's happening here and a white cube that's happening here. So right now you can see that our object is black. Well, how that works is basically when it hits the midpoint, right? So when it hits the midpoint of the object, it being the, the noise pattern, it's gonna accept whichever one is more predominant. So right now the white is the more predominant and right here, the black is the more predominant. You can see it even better here if I go up top. So again, our midpoint is somewhere here so as soon as I pass this midpoint, it's gonna turn white because white is on this side and black is on this side. So that's basically what it's doing. It's saying, all right, what's the most predominant color based on where the center point of this object is? All right, so now that we know what's happening with the mechanics, let's make something that's a little more interesting. So let's go ahead and set this to a different noise. Now I've played with a lot of these and I found that this new Toas uh, works pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and set it to that. And you can see right away, um, it gives us a different pattern. Now, if we come here, nothing happens. It's not animating. So let's let's make it animate next. Um, let's go ahead and set the animation to, I don't know, 55 or something and see what happens. So it's animating and now you can see that the box, well, it's changing, which is great. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this random, oops, not that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off this random pattern and let's just have a look up here and you can see that it's it's going from black to white. Now let's say that we didn't like this. We can just change the random seed to whatever we want. So this is fine, but there's something I don't like. 
And what I don't like is it's not going to pure white. It seems to be going to pure black, but not pure white. So how do we fix that? And again, we're only looking at data right now. Again, white is on, black is off. So let's go to our random field and let's go to our, um, our remapping. Now remapping, you can kind of just think of it as almost like levels in After Effects or Photoshop. So your inner offset is basically your contrast. Um, in this situation, your min is your white. It's basically gonna bring up that side. And in this, uh, in this situation, your max is your black. So let's bring up the inner offset to here. And now what you're gonna see, if we play it back, it's gonna go fully white as opposed to not fully white. And I'm gonna turn this back off so I can actually see what is happening. So now you can see, we have a flicker. I actually don't really love this flicker. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to my random field. I'm just gonna pick a different one. Sure, that's fine. Now we're getting a little bit more like variation. And this is kind of the beauty of this, right? It's like you can just switch it on the fly, right? You can just try different things and see what happens. And you always have that visual cue of what is actually happening. You can even just, if you really want to, you can even just move it. And if you move it, you can animate it that way. I probably wouldn't recommend it, but it is possible. All right, so we got this. Now, how do we even take this a step further? So what we can do is let's go ahead and let's create, let's just take this cube, duplicate it. And I'm just gonna go MoGraph, I'm gonna take a cloner. And let's, for this cloner, just have it be a row of three. All right, let's go to our effectors and let's just drag in the same effector. Now this is where it gets really powerful because now all of a sudden it's controlling every object in there, which is awesome, it's really good. Uh, what if we didn't want to control every object? Or, well, I'll also show you this, you know, if we put in different, let's put in different objects and let's go ahead and put whatever this in here. So now we have really anything that can be flickering. Um, so what if what if we didn't want everything to be flickering? What if I didn't want this cube to flicker? So what I can do is I can just come to my cloner object. I can go to MoGraph, MoGraph selection, and um, let's take this and this, and I believe that should do it. And then let's go to our plane effector. And the MoGraph selection is basically just telling it what to, to look at. I go to my plane effector and I can go to the effector and just drag this in, okay? So now you see only these two are, are doing that. And then if you want it inverted, you could just invert it. Now only this one is, is doing it. Pretty simple. Um, so that's how you would control that. So that's great, we have our data. So let's take this data and do something with it. We have our Flickr, we'll say that we like it just for the sake of demonstration. And let's go ahead and let's create a new object. I'm gonna go ahead and pause this. And let's go ahead and create a material and a new node material. All right, I'm gonna take this node material, I'm gonna apply it here, you're gonna see instantly we're gonna lose everything we just did, it's gone. So to get that back, let's just step into our node editor and let's get a color user data. Now, if you've never used color user data, essentially all it is, it's a bridge um, from this world out here, the data that's out here into the material. So it's just, it's a way of getting the data out here into here. So let's go to our, um, our settings for this and let's go to the presets under the inputs. Let's go to MoGraph color, because that's essentially what we want. We want the color from MoGraph. And let's put that to color. There we go. And then all of a sudden, now we have back what we, what we need. Now where this is powerful is we can now have the full control of a material, right? So I can, I can make the reflections however I want them to be, or I can do whatever I want. I have a, I have a material um, as you normally would. Um, but how do we get this to be a different color? So if you remember, we were just using this to drive information. But what if, what if we didn't just want black to white? So what you should do is to grab a ramp node. Okay, grab that ramp node and let's put that into the general input, alt input. Okay, let's take that and let's put it into color. Now, once again, nothing happens because this ramp by default is black to white, but let's take it and let's make it like a nice minty green. And now you can see that we are getting the colors just as you would expect. All right, we could take it even a step further. You could take it a lot steps further. So um, let's just say you want this to drive your opacity. 
All right, so now when it's black, now it truly is flickering in the sense that it's it's literally disappearing, right? Um, so you literally have objects that are, you know, 50%, 75%, whatever. They're literally going on and off, but they are also uh, doing the color. You can put this into anything. Anything that can accept black and white values, this will work for. Incredibly powerful. So that is how you would use the data that we created from the animation to actually drive a material. Um, and you can drive it through many different ways. All right, so next, um, how will we take this information and let's just say we had text that we wanted to uh, come on and off. So what I've done is I've already set up um, a scene here and let's go ahead and put this on. So what you can do is you can just take your text and it can be anything that you want, um, any anything that can be typed out basically. Um, and then you want to do the same steps we did before. You want to come to your letters, assuming you want the letters to animate individually. Just drag your plane effector. This plane effector is exactly what we just talked about. There's only one catch here. What you need to do is inside of your material, and this took me a long time to figure out. Do you remember we used to have presets, MoGraph color? You want it to actually be presets, object color. If you don't have it to object color, I'm going to show you what's going to happen. It's going to flicker your entire text rather than just your individual letters. So let's go presets object color. Now what we have is exactly what we see up here. So if I come here, I can see my text is flickering. And once again, let's say I don't like this. I can just come to my parameters, random field. I can just do a different one until I get something I like. And I, I have complete full control. Now you notice at the end, it actually gets fully lit up, right? It actually comes to a full stop and it's, it's uh, fully lit up. So how am I doing that? So when I say that this is fully controllable, it is fully controllable and that's what's nice about it. So at some point you're gonna want perhaps to go to full bleed. You're gonna want it to not be flickering. So how did I do that? So all I did is I just came into my remapping setting and I just played with the inner strength, uh, inner offset and the strength. I believe this minimum maybe was doing something, but it's, it's really not doing anything. And you can see all I'm doing is I'm animating this up to white. That's, that's all that's happening. So I just played with these settings. I had a couple keyframes where I went from light to dark, kind of in between. And then essentially it just animates up to white. Um, and you can, of course, dial this in how you want to, but you have the control to do it. I mean, heck, you could even animate the gradient if you wanted to. Um, that's another way to do it if you just wanted to straight up animate this gradient. Um, you could also get into adding additional fields if you want to subtract, etc., etc. But I find this to be the easiest way because you still have the, the, it's still flickering, but it's also getting brighter as it's flickering, which I think is quite nice. So that is how you set up the materials and a couple examples. Now, how would you actually apply this to a light? Well, the concept's pretty much the same. Um, so in part two, I'm going to switch over to a different scene and show you how to apply it to a light. All right, so the last thing we're going to talk about today is how to apply what we've learned from part one uh, to a light. Now, this is something that took me a long time to figure out, but when I did, I was so happy. And actually, the solution is incredibly easy. Um, so in this scene, we have some lights that are happening in the background. They're nothing more than area lights that are cylinders. And then we also have a light that is uh, here in the palm of the hand. Um, and this is a, uh, an area light that is a sphere. Um, so what we'd like to do is we'd like to make these flicker. How do we do that? Well, um, what I've done is I have our lights and inside our lights in the back here, um, they are inside a cloner object, right? Um, so that's pretty straightforward. And then I've also taken our orb light, the light in the palm of the hand, and just as in lesson one, I have put it underneath a fracture object because it does not need to be cloned. So now we have the ability to uh, place our effector in there. Now these effectors are exactly the same as what we created in the first lesson with our random fields, etc. Um, so let's see what happens when we put them on. So they are currently animating, but you will see up here, nothing is happening. So to fix this, all you need to do is select your lights Okay, and then there's this magic button here, blend object color. As soon as you do this, you'll see it will now respect our random um, setup that we've applied. 
which is amazing because now it's actually controlling it's not just controlling the look of it it's controlling actually the intensity of this light it's like how bright it actually gets um, now it's not reflected here but it actually is if we come here I have everything turned off just so you can see like I have the dude turned off but if we come in here you'll see that it's actually lighting up more and more and more um, throughout now what you can also do is you can come in here and you can change the color so if I change this to red it's going to react just as you would expect um, any other light to react and if you if you control the intensity here it's going to just kind of multiply it on top so you can think of it like that so we can come in here and now all of a sudden we have very bright beams that are happening again super low res but trying to get you guys um a preview here that's pretty much it man it's uh it works it's great and hopefully uh this setup will come in handy for you i'm gonna put these different setups online uh, you can get them at youme.academy and if you like them um, please use them and have fun with them and thanks so much for the support and i will see you on the next one <laughs>